Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Tuesday, it is June the 6th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we do, picking up in Mark chapter 1, the Lord Jesus Christ has just come off of calling his first four disciples. They were absolutely enthralled uh, with this one who came and called them. And as soon as he did, the Bible says they dropped their nets and they followed him. And we talked about, man, what could we do if we all had that kind of obedience? Now, here's what I also do know, that not every single one is called to drop their livelihood, not called to drop their family and go and follow the Lord Jesus wherever he was going. This was a special call. But on one sense, that's true. But on another sense, it's not true, because once we do come to follow Christ, regardless of our occupation, regardless of our family, we are to see them and to um, respond to them in a way that brings God glory and points people to Christ. And so you abandon your former way of looking at your job or your, your family or whatever the case may be so that you can follow Christ and hopefully uh, they would see and want to follow Christ as well. And so we all have the commission on our lives to share the truth of Jesus when he calls us to come and follow him. But not all, not all uh, go into what you would call full-time uh, vocation of of. of uh, being a servant of the Lord in a special way, but we all are servants of the Lord. Uh, and he called them and they were willing. He said, drop the net, forget the job, leave the family behind, we're following Christ. And I'm glad that men do that. But as Jesus then calls his 12 disciples, I love the first thing that he does with them. Knows what it says here. And verse 21, and they went in, oh, that straight away, no, yeah, and they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue. First thing he did, he went to church. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and um, sadly, the church was in a bad place at this, this time when Christ was on the earth, but he always observed the Sabbath. He always went to church. I mean, you go through scripture over and over and over again, you see it. Christ is always observing the law. He's always observing the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath. Uh, honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. I mean, he fulfilled the law in every instance. He knew the, um, the specialness of God in his heart toward the gathered body. And we should gather together. And Scripture is very clear about that in the New Testament. Um, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. Church is important. It's an ecclesia. It's the called out ones. It's the gathered ones who are being sanctified and edified and, um, and equipped uh, for the work of the ministry, whatever that looks like, um, regardless if it's full-time vocation or if it's just going back into that workplace with a new perspective, a new uh, light and lease on life to to show them the light of Christ. And, and so that's what we all should do. If we'd all do that, no matter where we went, uh, no matter what we were doing, if we would live for Christ, we would make a big difference in this world uh, or could make a big difference in this world. But Notice what he says. He said he entered into the into the uh, uh, um, he, on straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and he taught. And man, what a marvelous uh, opportunity that was to hear the Lord Jesus Christ teach. Hmm. Uh, but you know, as you think about the other side, these are people. He's going in and teaching in the place where they're supposed to be coming being taught, and now he's in there teaching. And I love what the Bible says here. And they were astonished at his doctrine. And you know this, as you go back and you read the rest of the Gospels, the Bible will come along like Jesus say, would say on the Sermon on the Mount, you have heard it said that you shall not commit adultery. So he's telling you what you have heard in the synagogue. He's telling you what you've heard in your religious gatherings. But he would say, but I say unto you. Okay. So he switches that. Uh, he switches that. And, and they would be astonished. They'd say, man, listen to this guy teach. He's a, this is amazing. I've never heard this but i love because he says for he taught them as one that had authority and that's why i say so when he says you've heard it said you've heard it said you've heard it said but i say unto you he, he, the scribes have always had to have had to say the lord says the lord says the lord says and jesus says no i say i say and this caused a big stink because then they would say, well, if you say, then you must say that you're God. And that's what he was saying all the time. Yes, exactly right. I am God. I am God in the flesh. I am God the Son. I am God the incarnate. I am here walking amongst you, God dwelling amongst you. And, um, and what a blessing that was. And he says, 
For they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribes. And so whenever we recognize that truth, that we're not, when we read the word of God, we're not taking in secondhand information. We're not uh, taking in what someone else says we ought to do. We're, we're taking in what God himself has written down for us to know for certain. And, uh, and it is the authority. It is the authority. Scripture um, um, concerning Christ is the authority. And that's exactly what the Bible, these 66 books are. It's an entire book. Uh, it's, a, it's 66 books that make up an entire book, the Holy Bible, which tell us about Christ. Everything we need to know. As Second Peter says, according to his divine power, he's given us everything according to, um, to life and godliness. And there's not an area uh, in which we live, a sphere of life which we operate in that Christ is not spoken to as the authority and says, this is what I've called you to. And so I pray today that you recognize that there's a difference between what you read in Scripture and what you hear most of the time behind the pulpit because most of the time what you hear behind the pulpit is a scribe uh, telling you what they think about God rather than what God has said. And what we need more of today is the Word of God. Men who stand and say, this is what God has said, regardless if you like it or not. We need to be conformed to God, not God being conformed to us. Not he gets us, he transforms us. He transforms us. He's the authority. His, his doctrine should blow us away and it should let us, uh, it should make us to feel uh, as if that we're missing something. Because we are. We really are missing something. We're missing the authority. And so I do pray that you come under this doctrine. I pray you're, you're like me. You're blown away when you read the scriptures, when you see the depth and, and, and the unbelievable um, wisdom that is found in the word of God. And, and you understand that it is the authority and then allow it to govern your life and go out and live as Christ has given to you the ability to do. And so I pray you go forth today mighty in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one with all authority. And I pray that you are encouraged.